Hi all, good morning. Am I audible? Am I audible? Are you all able to listen to me? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Yeah, thank you. We shall just wait for a minute and then we shall get started. So before that, uh, I would like to know, uh, Likita, are you repeating the speaking module? Or is this your first class? Yes, ma'am, I'm repeating. Sorry? I'm not a new student, ma'am, I'm repeating again. Okay, right. What about Varsha, Hamsini Varsha? Ma'am, I'm not a new student, ma'am. Okay, have you taken up the speaking module before? No, ma'am. Okay, right. So, Venu, what about you? Venu, are you the one who attended the reading session two weeks before, I guess? Okay, we shall just wait for a minute and then we shall get started. Ma'am, just give me five to ten minutes. Facing some network issues, I'll clear it again. Yeah, yeah, fine, Nikita. Thank you. Right. Right. We shall get started with the speaking module. Those who are attending the speaking module for the first time, uh, if you have any doubts, please make sure that uh, you clarify those doubts and please feel very comfortable. Okay, don't feel hesitant. Even if you have silly doubts, you can ask me. I would like to introduce myself. First of all, I'm Chitra Arnachalam from English Springs. And as this is speaking module, I want every one of you to be so interactive, okay? Because first I'll be giving you the instructions and we'll be, and we'll be dealing with uh, practice uh, passages. So I want everybody to be interactive, okay? Now let's get started. So speaking module, in speaking module, we have five different types of questions, okay? We, we have read aloud, repeat sentence, describe image, read a lecture, answer short questions. In this, uh, please do have a notepad with you. This handout will be provided. 
this handout will be provided but apart from that i'll be giving you some tips and strategies so it would be so good if you have notepad and it would be so good if you jot them down okay right so coming back to this we have five types of questions in speaking read aloud repeat sentence describe image read a lecture answer short questions in these five types read aloud and describe image these two are non audio based okay non audio based the rest of the things repeat sentence read a lecture answer short questions these are audio based okay so let me just give you a brief introduction about each and every type read aloud type of question you'll be given a paragraph okay and you are supposed to just read the paragraph as such aloud that's it repeat sentence you will be listening to a tape okay a sentence which consists of 13 to 14 words will be there so you'll be listening to that sentence and what you are supposed to do is you have to repeat that sentence describe image as i said this is completely non audio based you'll be provided with a statistical information or non statistical information all you need to do is you have to describe okay the given information and read a lecture is similar to repeat sentence but repeat sentence will be dealing with only one sentence but read a lecture it's a it's a big paragraph a kind of big paragraph so you'll be listening to that lecture okay you'll be listening to that lecture and then you have to just retell that lecture as such answer short questions you will be dealing with some questions in which you have to answer those uh, questions in one or two words so these are the five different types of questions in speaking now we shall get started with the read aloud okay right shravan kumar are you repeating speaking audio shravan yeah ma'am okay fine venu for you this is the first uh, class right taking up speaking module yeah speaking all right first class from this okay right so read aloud this is the first type of question which uh, you'll be facing it in pt exam and in the speaking module there can be around 7 to 10 questions on read aloud we cannot predict the exact number of questions okay so what are we supposed to do a paragraph will be given which has got two to five sentences with at most uh, 25 to 50 words which will be displayed on the screen and we are supposed to read the paragraph as it is shown on the screen all we need to do is we have to read it very clearly loudly and quickly that's very important see these three terms are very very important when you deal with speaking module clearly loudly and quickly when i say loudly sometimes oh, we scream okay so we have to keep an eye on that we must not scream all we need to do is we have to read the given paragraph clearly loudly and quickly okay see this is a small sample this is a small paragraph which has got uh, nearly five sentences so we are just supposed to read this paragraph as such okay and here the preparation time is 40 seconds please jot them down the preparation time is 40 seconds okay and the recording time is also 40 seconds so the preparation time is given for you to rehearse and practice if you speak during that time nothing will be recorded okay and on the screen you will be able to see 
you will be able to see a blue bar which appears on the screen or you will be able to listen to a beep sound okay so when you listen to a beep sound and when you are able to witness a blue bar which appears on the screen what you have to do you have to start reading the paragraph spontaneously immediately if you delay even if you start after 3 seconds what will happen on the screen you will be able to see recording ended so please don't delay okay make sure that you your focus is on the screen completely and as soon as the blue bar appears and as soon as you listen to the uh, beep sound start recording and recording you have 40 seconds but you do not want to consume the whole 40 seconds okay sometimes it depends on the paragraph if you are uh, getting a small paragraph you will be able to complete that within 25 seconds that's well and good and some paragraphs you will be able to complete within 30 seconds that's good so once you are done with one particular recording you can just press next button and you can move on to the next question you do not want this complete 40 seconds to get over if you wait then what will happen oral fluency score will get decreased okay so all you need to do is try to complete reading a paragraph as soon as possible clearly loudly and quickly these three terms are very very important and once you are done you can just click next button and you can move on to the next question okay yeah these two are the scoring parameters oral fluency and pronunciation i'll be explaining about it little later and this is how you'll be scored so you know very well that the pte it has got a unique feature right overlapping of score which means for every module you not only get score from the questions of that particular module right the questions of other modules also contribute to the score of particular module for example as actually we are now dealing with speaking but when you deal with read aloud question you get score for reading also three marks for reading and three marks for speaking for one read aloud question okay now let's see how we are supposed to manage the test what are we supposed to during the preparation time so can anybody tell me what is the preparation uh, duration how many seconds do we have 47 exactly so we have 40 seconds for preparation what are we supposed to do during that time please listen to me very carefully number 1 you have to read a paragraph very slowly and try to observe try to witness any difficult words any advanced words or any difficult expressions or tricky expressions so try to uh, note them down okay try to notice that and practice them first so first what do we have to do we have to read a paragraph very slowly and try to identify tricky expressions advanced words or the words that you find it very difficult to pronounce okay and after that during second time you can just read the complete paragraph okay clearly loudly and quickly you can practice you can rehearse so the time that you get 40 this 40 seconds would be sufficient for you to rehearse at least two to three times okay so make sure that you make use of this preparation time really well and even the people who are so proficient at english sometimes because of overconfidence or you know because of lack of practice they ended up in getting low score in read aloud whenever you deal with read aloud definitely practice must be needed every day at least one paragraph till you uh, book a, book the slot or till you attend the exam make sure that you practice it's very important okay so make sure that you utilize this 40 seconds really well the preparation time and i was talking about the scoring parameters oral fluency and pronunciation let's uh, see them in detail what is oral fluency is all about see it's all about how well we uh, speak how quickly we speak 
okay as i told you you must not consume the whole 40 seconds it depends on the paragraph try to complete as soon as possible and you know what normally when we do reading in our day to day life we articulate right we give stress pause ups and downs and all but when you deal with the spt read aloud question you do not want to stop for any commas or full stop but in between you can just take a breath okay so please don't articulate please don't intonate please don't stop for commas and full stop all you need to do is you have to read the particular paragraph in a flow that's it okay and uh, when we read it uh, quickly sometimes we skip words sometimes we replace words sometimes we add some words so we have to be very careful with that okay so make sure that you speak very clearly and all the words in full please don't swallow the words so this is all about oral fluency so again i would like to tell you once you are done with one particular question please click next button and move on to the next question if you wait for that 40 seconds to get over your oral fluency score will get reducted okay and next parameter is pronunciation so it's all about how well you pronounce the word correctly sometimes of course we uh, come up with advanced words or the words which are completely unfamiliar so even when we deal with those kind of words what we have to do is we have to just try to stress on the letters of the words that's very important and try to say the sounds say the words with the right sound okay so for this a uh, reason it would be really good enough for you to practice every day a paragraph so definitely when you practice you will every day come across certain uh, tricky expressions or tricky words so with that practice you will be able to fetch high score in real exam okay so these two are the scoring parameters remember oral fluency and pronunciation now we can start with this practice thing say certain words that start and end with similar letters if you see here ice skating is sound ice skating demand draft national literacy rob bank one nation strong gate so these are the words which start and end with similar letters so what we are supposed to do if we read these two words all together without leaving a gap between them it will not be pronounced properly the pronunciation will get affected so make sure that you give a gap when you pronounce these words okay ice skating demand draft national literacy rob bank you cannot say rob bank rob bank if you say like that then the pronunciation will get affected one nation strong gate this is how we are supposed to pronounce okay next thing is the words that end with s and t s normally we don't give that much stress but in pte as you know very well this is computer based test each and every word must be captured correctly so for that reason you have to give stress for the words which end with s and t s so see here the list of words tests tastes consists contests similarly we come across unknown words or new words so what we have to do is even if you do not know the meaning try to pronounce the words as per the letters try to give stress as per the letters so if you see this word akimbo akimbo is nothing but a kind of posture okay having um, uh, the hand on the hip a kind of posture akimbo and the next one is pedagogy a kind of methodology pedagogy akimbo and sometimes uh, the system will not be able to recognize a word with end with ed it the sound so make sure that you pronounce it very clearly see here changed rules used id used garments demanded increased that id sound must be heard well then the words that end with ly 
cordially, beautifully, hardly. Don't stress at the end. That's very important. And sometimes we come across uncommon pronunciation. Okay. So this you'll be able to figure it out when you practice a lot. Okay. See, the spelling of this is R-E-N-D-E-Z-V-O-U-S. But the pronunciation has to be like this, render words. Render words means a kind of an interview, an appointment. Okay. Similarly, if you see here, the spelling is what? F-A-C-A-D-E. But you have to pronounce this as facade. Facade. Facade means frontage. Okay, in front, frontage. So if you practice, then you'll be able to deal with uncommon pronunciation as well. And we need to be very careful with silent letters. We have not many words uh, which have got silent letters. See, for example, island, palm. This is what? Subtle, B is silent. Subtle, psychology, no. And words starting with V and W. Some people, they don't pronounce the words properly. So whenever you pronounce the words that start with W, please notice that your teeth goes in and lip come out. Watch, where. Dealing with the words that start with V, teeth goes out, lip comes in. Violin, vase, various. So it comes by practice. Okay. Now I want everybody to deal with these words. Just give me a second. I'll just put them all together. Yeah, I want one by one to read all these words. Please do remember the things that I taught you. Yes, Avarsha, you can start slowly. Yeah. Yes, Varsha, Hamsini Varsha. Everybody, whenever I call out your name, please be interactive and Please unmute yourself and answer and respond as well. Ice skating. Mm. Demand draft. Mm. National literacy. Mm. Rob bank. One nation. Strong gate. Test. Test. Taste. Condes. Condes. Akimbo, pedagogy, pedagogy. Mm. changed rules, used garment, demanded, increased, cordially, beautifully, hardly. Ren Sorry, ma'am, I can't spell Render words. Render words. Render words. Mm. Okay. Facade. Facade. Okay. Okay, fine. Facard. Not Island. facard. Facard. F-A-S-A. The spelling is F-A-C-A, but you have to pronounce it as facade. 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 Mm. Okay. Island. Pop. Un... Subtle. Sorry? Subtle. Be silent. Subtle. Subtle. Mm. Psychology. Mm. No. Mm. Watch, wear, mm. violin, wear, various. Vase. Vase. Uh, violin. Violin. Not violin, violin. Violin. Yes, good. Good try. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Mainu. Yes, yeah. Ice skating, demand draft, national literacy, rob bank. One nation, strong gate, tests, tastes, consists, contests, akimbo, pedagogy, changed rules, used garments, demanded, increased, cordially, beautifully, 
hardly rendezvous facade island palm subtle psychology no watch where violin ways various very good yes likita yes ma'am ice skating demand draft national literacy drop bank one nation strong gate test taste consist contest akimbo pedagogy changed rules used garments demanded increased cordially beautifully hardly genderless facade island palm subtle psychology no watch wear violin ways various very good likita yes shravan please try ice skating demand draft national literacy rock bank one nation strong gate test test consist contest a combo pedagogy change rules use garment demanded increase cordially beautifully hardly vendover facade island palm subtle psychology known watch wear violin wear various very good shravan right so i would like to bring uh, to you all the common mistakes that our students did before so i want you not to repeat the same mistakes see here in a hurry i told you right you have to speak very clearly loudly and quickly so when i say quickly sometimes in a hurry in order to take the least time in recording we sometimes miss letters we skip some words even okay or we replace some words we have to be very careful okay we must not do them and if you realize that you have made a mistake please don't go back and correct please don't do that that comes very naturally for everybody of us but please don't do it when you deal with read aloud not with read aloud alone when you deal with speaking module if even if you realize that you have made a mistake just go in a flow don't go back and correct and most commonly we miss out yes sometimes we add yes so to, to certain words we have to be very careful with that and apart from everything placement of mic is very very important as you know really well everything will be captured by the software by the computer so each and every word must be captured correctly and properly for that reason you have to place your mic properly so make sure that you place your mic between your lower lip and chin please don't place your mic between your lips please try doing this at your home when you find free time and try recording a paragraph okay and get to know and also what you have to do is uh, as i already taught you about the scoring parameters it's very important to know about the scoring parameters so that you know it would be very good enough for you to analyze yourself where you actually stand whether you have to focus on oral fluency or whether you have to focus on pronunciation you will be able to understand where you actually stand so for that reason what you have to do place your mic properly record a paragraph and just play that and see what are the mistakes that you have made okay so please don't forget about these two parameters oral fluency and as i told you it's all about how fluently you speak how fluently you read without any disruptions without making uh, too many pauses or breaks and pronunciation as i mentioned it's all about how correctly how well you stress uh, the letters of each and every word okay and i told you right in the beginning during the preparation time i wanted you to read a particular paragraph slowly and get to know the tricky expressions and all so after finding out those tricky expressions or tricky words what you can do when you are doing the real recording you can just slow down on some places where you have those tricky expressions or tricky words only in those places you can just slow down why we are why am i asking you to slow down means we become very conscious and we try to 
uh, say those expressions clearly. Okay, that's very important. And one other thing, please don't uh, sacrifice the content of the given passage. All you need to do is you have to read the paragraph as such. Okay, so please uh, practice hard every day. Just take two paragraphs and practice, record your own voice and check on the basis of speaking criteria. Okay, the parameters, oral fluency and pronunciation. Okay. So are the instructions clear with everybody? Shall we get started with the, the practice reading test? I mean, speaking module. Do you have any doubts till this? Everybody, please be interactive here. How will I know whether you understood or not? Shall we move on? Do you have any doubt? No, ma'am. No, no, no. Right. Okay. Fine. So see here, this is the first paragraph that we are going to deal with. First, let me just read this for you very slowly. History rubs shoulders. So if you see here, this word ends with yes, and this word starts with yes. So what we have to do? We have to, what are we supposed to do when we deal with these kind of words? Rubs shoulders. You can... Yeah, exactly. We have to give a gap here. Rubs shoulders. And you can witness a lot of uh, plural words. Make sure that you have to pronounce as such. You cannot cut down yes or you cannot add yes. Often overlaps with many other areas of research from myths and epics to the social sciences, including economics, politics, biography, demography, and much else besides. Some histories are almost pure narratives, while others go in for detailed, tightly focused analysis of, for example, the parish records of a Cornish village in the 16th century. Okay, so when, when you read like this slowly, you will be able to uh, know the tricky words and the expressions. And later when the recording starts, I'll just give you a sample. This is how you are supposed to read. Listen to me. History of shoulders and often overlaps with many other areas of research from myths and epics to the social sciences, including economics, politics, biography, demography, and much else besides. Some histories are almost pure narratives while others go in for detailed, tightly focused analysis of, for example, the parish records of a Cornish village in the 16th century. Have I stopped uh, when I noticed commas are full stop? Did I stop? No, man. Yeah. So I haven't stopped when I noticed commas full stop. I haven't, st I haven't articulated. I haven't intonated. I just took a breath then and there. That's it. So this is how you're supposed to do. Make sure that you don't miss out yes. Don't skip words. Don't avoid words. You have to just read the words as such. Okay. So what am I going to do is I'm just going to give you all 40 seconds time for the preparation. Okay. And after that, I'll, I want everybody to deal with this paragraph, right? So your 40 seconds preparation time starts now. Everybody please to practice. Yeah, time's up. Who would like to try first? I'll go. Okay. Yeah, anyone. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, Venu, please go ahead. 
Yeah. Um, you are saying about the first one or A one or B one? A only. Okay, I I run through the B one. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I'll I'll start reading first one. Yeah. Yeah. History rubs shoulders and often overlaps with many other areas of research, from myths and epics to the social sciences, including economics, politics, biography, demography, and much else besides. Some histories are almost pure narratives, with others go in for detailed, tightly focused analysis of people. For example, the parish records for a Cornish village in the 16th century. Okay, uh, you took 17 seconds, but what happened here and here? There is no word called people, but you said people, right? Cool. Yeah. If I'm not wrong, yeah. So try to avoid these silly mistakes, okay? Okay. Right. Okay. Yes, Lakita, please go ahead. Yes, ma'am. History wraps shoulders and often overlaps with many other areas of research, from myths and epics to the social sciences, including economics, politics, biography, demography, and much else besides. Some histories are almost pure narratives, while others go in for detailed, tightly focused analysis of, for example, the parish records of a Cornish village in the 16th century. So beautiful. We took 14 seconds, and it was very clear. Very good. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Yes, Varsha. Varsha, are you there? Please to respond uh, immediately, Varsha. Yes, Shaman, please go ahead. Histories of shoulders and often overlap with many other areas of research from the myth and epics to the social sciences, including economic politics, biography, demography, and more. much else besides. Some histories are almost few narrative, while others go in for detailed, tightly focused and analyze of work. Examples: the parish record the Cornish village in the 16th century. Okay, a uh, good improvement, uh, Shavin. But you know, I I'll just uh, give you all a tip. If we become more conscious only, we tend to do lot many mistakes, right? So be very casual. Okay, that's very important. And see here, this is myths, epics. You just confused them, and you said myths, uh, mythics, something like that. Yeah, but good improvement compared to last time. Now it's better. Good. Uh, Varsha, would you like to try? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Varsha, uh, I just request you to respond immediately, Varsha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. You can start now. Okay. History rubs shoulders and often overlaps with many other areas of research, from myths and epics to the social sciences. Including economics, politics, biography, demography, and much else besides, some histories are almost pure narratives, while others go in for detailed, tightly focused analysis of, for example, the parish records of a Cornish village in the 16th century. Very good. Good try. You took 21 seconds. That's okay. Um, okay. And this one is histories, histories, histories. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Next, we shall deal with C. Okay, let me just give you all forty seconds time for the preparation. Please do prepare. Your preparation time starts now. Yeah, time's up. Yes, Venu, please go ahead. Venu, are you there? Please go ahead. 
Sorry, my microphone is. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Before the time of Alexander the Great, the only Eastern people who could be compared with the Greeks in the fields of science and philosophy were from the Indian subcontinent. However, because so little is known about Indian chronology, it is difficult to tell how much of their science was original and how much was the result of the Greek influence. Beautiful. You just took thirty seconds. Very nice, Venu. Thank you. Keep it up. Yeah. Yes, Shavan. Before the time of Alexander the Great, the only Eastern people who could be compared with, with the Greeks in the field of science and philosophy were from the Indian subcontinent. However, because so little is known about Indian chronology, it is difficult to tell how much. Of the things was original and the whole much was the result of the Greek influence. Okay, good try. You took twenty-two seconds, and this one is chronology. Chronology. Can I just pronounce this word again? Chronology. Very good. Correct. Yes, like it. Please go ahead. Mm. Okay, ma'am. Before the time of Alexander the Great, the only Eastern people who could be compared to the Greeks of Greeks in the field of science or philosophy were from the Indian subcontinent. However, because so little is known about the Indian chronology, it is difficult to tell how much of the science was original and how much was a result of Greek influence. Very good. You took thirteen seconds. Yes, Varsha. Before the time of Alexander the Great, the only Eastern people who could be compared with the Greeks in the field of science and Philosophy were from the Indian subcontinent. However, because so little is known about Indian chronology, it is difficult to tell how much of their science was original and how much was the result of Greek influence. You have taken sixteen seconds. That uh, that's really good. I appreciate that. Okay. See, everybody, the most important thing is first you have to give importance for the words. Okay, you have to speak. You have to read the words very clearly. That's the first importance you are supposed to give. Second on only you have to complete this paragraph quickly, so make sure that you pronounce each and every word very clearly. Okay. Next uh, D is quite um, challenging because here you have few tongue twisters. Let's see, while far fewer, so definitely you have to give a gap. While far fewer people these days write letters and therefore have less use for stamps. There are uh, still few categories of stamp which attract collectors. Stamps in common for common use for an indefinite period until the price goes up or call definitive issues. So sometimes what happens instead of indefinite, we say indefinitive. We have to be very careful. While a more collectible type of stamp is the commemorative, commemorative. Issue honoring people. We must not say ha honoring. That's incorrect. H is silent. Honoring people, events and anniversaries. Okay. So let me just give you all forty seconds time, please, to prepare. Yeah, time's up. Varsha, please start. While far fewer people these days write letters, and therefore have less use for stamps, there are still a few categories of stamp which attract collectors. Stamps in common use for an indefinite period until the price goes up are called def definitive issues. While a more collectible type of stamp is the commemorative issue, honoring people, events, and anniversaries. Okay, that's really very good try. You took twenty one seconds. Could you please tell me? Could could you please pronounce this word? Commemorative. 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 Exactly. Commemorative. And here, uh, you just struggled a bit. 
if you if you have avoided that it would have been so better okay apart from that you seriously dealt with this paragraph well good okay yeah yes next likita yes ma'am well for a few people these days write letters and therefore have less use for stamps there are still a few categories of stamp which attract collectors stamps are common use for indefinite period until the price goes up a called definitive issues while well, a more collectible stamp type of stamp as a commemorative issue honoring people events and anniversaries okay you took 15 seconds so something has happened here right yes ma'am yeah that's okay sometimes it happens and try to avoid that even okay okay ma'am Yes, Shaman. Please go ahead. Well, for well for people, people those days write letters and therefore have less use for stamps. There are still a few categories of stamps which attract collectors. Stamps in common use use for an added indefinite period until the price goes up are called definite definite use issues. Well, there are more collectible types of stamps in the common. Some of our review issues are in people, even Sunday anniversary. Okay, you took thirty seconds, uh, Shavan. Shavan, you have to practice a lot from the beginning. I am telling you that, you know, first you work on the pronunciations. That's very important. First, you work on the tongue twisters. From the basic, if you just uh, practice, then it would be easy for you. and i told you even if you made a mistake please don't go back and correct even if you mispronounced a word that's okay instead of definitive if you have said definite that's okay just move on just read in a flow okay that's very important practice is needed yes why no well for for fear people these days write letters and therefore have less use of stamps for stamps there are still a few categories of stamp which attracts collectors stamps in common use of for an indefinite period until the price goes up are called definitive issues while a more collectible type of stamp is the commemorative issue honoring people events and anniversaries okay something happened here a bit yeah commemorative yeah that's okay good let's deal with two more paragraphs okay so let's deal with this b This handout has got so many paragraphs. So make sure that you practice a uh, uh, practice two paragraphs every day. So if you see here, please listen. Most peasants remain self-sufficient and skeptical about money, and with good reason. The triumph, not triumph, the triumph of capitalism probably made them worse off. They now had to deal with a centralized imperial state that was collecting tax. more efficiently giving more power to landlords and slowly reducing customary peasant rights to land and produce okay so the preparation time starts now Yeah, time's up. Yes, we know. Most peasants remain self-sufficient and skeptical about money, and with a good reason. The triumph of capitalism probably made them worse off. They now had to deal with a centralized imperial state that was collecting tax more efficiently, giving more power to landlords, landlords, and slowly reducing customary peasant rights to land and produce. Okay, please don't repeat this. Okay, landlords. Even if you have made a mistake, please avoid silly mistakes, uh, Venu, so that you will be able to fetch high score in speaking. Yeah, your pronunciation is good, and uh, you are good at actually speaking. Make sure that you avoid these silly mistakes. Yeah. Yes, uh, Shavan, please go ahead. Most persons remain self-sufficient and skeptical. The people have borrowed money, and it is a good reason. The time, the capitalism probably made them worse off. They now had to deal with a certain kind of imperial state, 
that was collecting tax more efficiently, giving more powers and to landlords, and slowly reducing customary efficient, efficient right to lot land and the produce. Okay, good. Good try. You took 24 seconds. Yes, uh, Varsha. Most present remain self-sufficient, skeptical about money, and with good reason. The triumph of capitalism probably made them worse off. They know how had to deal with a centralized imperial state that was collecting tax more efficiently, giving more power to landlords, thus slowly reducing customary peasant rights to land and produce. Okay, good. You took 17 seconds, but you did you say this and? And uh, did you say now or no? They know. They know. Uh, they now, right? They now had to deal with. And this and was not heard properly, self-sufficient and skeptical. Yeah, okay. please avoid silly mistakes, Varsha. Good okay. to do. Yeah. Moving on to the last paragraph. This one. Most succulent plants are found in regions where there is a little rainfall, dry air, plenty of sunshine, poorer soils, and high temperatures during part of the year. These conditions have caused changes in plant structures, which have resulted in greatly increased thickness of stems, leaves, sometimes roots, enabling them to store moisture from the infrequent rains. So completely different words. So please practice. Your preparation time starts now. Yes, time's up. Varsha, you can start now. Most succulent plants are found in regions where there is little rainfall, dry air, plenty of sunshine, porous soils, and high temperatures during part of the year. These conditions have caused changes in plant structures, which have result, resulted in greatly increased thickness of stems, leaves, and sometimes roots, enabling them to store moisture from the infrequent rains. Very good try, Varsha. Uh, you took 19 seconds. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Shavan. More secular. Uh, more, um. Shavan, one second, Shavan. First, your target should be, even if you have mispronounced the words, please don't say that word again. Please don't repeat it. First, make this as a target. Okay, now you start, Shrivin. More succulent plants are found in regions where there is a little rainfall, by plenty of sunshine for thorough soil and higher temperature during parts of the year. Great. These conditions have caused changes in plant structures and which have resulted in great increase in thickness and skin of skin. Leaves and sometimes roots are to store night food from the Okay, good try. So always we have to fix a target. If we feel that we are not able to pronounce the word properly, then we have to start pronouncing the, you know, we have to split the words and we need to pronounce first. So step by step, if we approach only, if we practice only, we'll be able to get it. Yes, Maino, please go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Most succulent plants are found in regions where there is a little rainfall. Dry air, plenty of sunshine, poor soils, and high temperatures during the part of the year. These conditions have caused changes in the plant structures, which have resulted in greatly increased thickness of stems, leaves, and sometimes roots, enabling them to store moisture from the in the frequent rains. Okay, what happened at the last? Yeah, Sorry. Could you please try again? Yeah. yeah. Most succulent plants are found in regions where there is a little rainfall, dry air, plenty of sunshine, poor soils, and high temperatures during the part of the year. 
these conditions have caused changes in plant structures which have resulted in a greatly increased thickness of stems leaves and sometimes roots enabling them to store moisture from the frequent infrequent rains sorry <laughs> right okay you took 17 seconds ma'am one doubt so after 17 seconds do we need to immediately click on next or do we need to wait for 2 seconds at least please click next button okay the oral fluency score will get increased okay yeah even if you are done with 13 seconds or even 12 seconds certain paragraphs you know we find it so easy so we'll be able to complete within 13 seconds even so please next uh, click next button okay. and move on to the next question okay yeah so um, if you look at this handout you have got a lot many uh, paragraphs so please make sure that these paragraphs and all you'll be able to complete within 12 seconds or 13 seconds okay so make sure that you practice every day take up two paragraphs and practice every day right so this is all about read aloud type of question it seems to be easy actually but without practice it would be difficult so it's not that you have to spend one hour two hours like that it would be enough if you spend at least 5 minutes every day just dealing with two paragraphs okay and all you need to remember is the three terms that i told you clearly loudly and quick so definitely if you um if you remember these three terms then you will be able to fetch good score in read aloud because in read aloud only you get 7 to 10 questions more number of questions you'll be able to fetch uh, good marks okay so tomorrow what we'll be dealing with is uh, we'll be dealing with describe image statistical information and day after tomorrow we'll be dealing with describe image non statistical information okay right so do you have any doubts in read aloud type of question is everything clear with everybody even if you have a silly doubt please do ask me i'm here to help you yes prashan i would like to ask from you first no from you first do you have any doubts is everything clear everything clear ma'am no doubt right okay shavan what about you no doubt okay shavan are you practicing Sh shavan every day yeah ma'am okay good yes maino what about you Yeah, it's clear, ma'am. Right. Okay. So, describe image. Uh, we'll uh, we'll be providing you the template and all. So, we shall start that tomorrow. Yeah. So, have a great day, everybody. And tomorrow also, I'll be giving you a paragraph and I'll be asking you to read. So, every day we will have a kind of revision at least for two to three minutes. Once we are done with one type of question, so that once uh, once this week is over, at the end you will have complete revision as well. okay including all the types of questions right so have a great day everybody take care bye we shall see you tomorrow thank you ma'am yeah